uh, we're going to look at some scripture together today. And please follow along with me these first couple of minutes here and keep up with, with, with what I'm going to say. Very important message this morning. Every once in a while, they give one of them State of the Union addresses, and that's not what this is, but I'm going to talk about the shape this world's in. Ephesians chapter 2, look at verse number 1. Here he said, And you hath he quickened. That word quickened means made alive. So when you were dead spiritually, the next, the next part of the verse, who were dead in trespasses and sin. Before you got saved, you were alive physically, but dead spiritually. And when you get saved, he quickens you. Verse 2, wherein in time past, that would be before you got saved, ye walked according to the course of this world, the world we now live in, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who could that be? That's the devil and his power. The spirit that now still does work in the children of his disobedience. You know what's wrong with this world this morning? The spirit of the devil is running it. It lieth in wickedness. Look at verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh. This is the way you lived before you got saved. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved. Back in verse 2, it said, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. That's what I want to talk about this morning. I'm going to preach this morning on the subject, the course of of this world. Give me your attention, please. Listen to what I'm getting ready to say. The world in the Bible, according to the Bible, the world that me and you live in is on a course. It's on a course. Now, a course is like, like a, a path or a way of travel. A train, when it follows the track around like this, the train is on a course. A river or a creek follows a course, comes down the mountain, goes this way, goes that way. That's the course of that river, that highway, Interstate 40 out there. That's a course for cars to go. You stay on that course, and you go where it's going. According to the Bible, the world that we live in today is on a course, the course of this world. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not this this. The world is not just a big place to live it up and have fun. It is not just to be all you can be and enjoy life. That is not the, the way it is. The world this morning is on a course. It's headed somewhere. According to the Bible, it started back in the Garden of Eden. I told you about it that last Sunday night. The devil came along. He pulled up his big train engine like this, and there was a man woman in the Garden of Eden. And he said, uh, why don't you take a bite of that fruit right there? He talked her into it. She got her husband to do it, and they got on the train. He picked up Cain. He picked up Abel. He picked up Moses. He picked up Noah. He picked up everybody that's ever been born on the course of this world. And the devil's the old conductor. You know that old song, Long Black Train? That's true, spiritually. Uh, and, and it's going somewhere. It's going like this, and everybody that's ever been born except Jesus was on that train. You know what me and you did when we got saved? We jumped out. We jumped off right into the arms of Jesus. I bailed out when I was 18 years old. I seen where it was going. I seen where it was taking me. And I said, all right, I'm, I'm checking out. I'm out of here. And I jumped out, and the Lord caught me. And that's what I hope that you will do today. Now, I want to say about three, four or five things about the course that this world is on. Number one, it is a crowded course. It's extremely crowded crowded. The Bible said, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. You talk about a minority, you and I that are going the other way, we're in big minority in this world. Most people today are headed 
on the course of this world. Most athletes, most movie stars, most entertainers, most uh, uh, educators, most religious people, even in other, and most people in other religions are, are on the course of this world, going the wrong way, headed the wrong way. As a matter of fact, the majority is always going the wrong way. You know what you and I are like? We're like a big river. It's coming at us this way, and everybody's floating down that river, and me and you turn around trying to go upstream. That's the Christian life. Most people today are on the course of this world. I want to say secondly this morning, it is a backward course. It is a backward course. Do you realize this morning that the world is going backwards? You understand the devil makes things go backwards? Let me, let me illustrate it. The first thing God ever said to them was, don't eat that fruit. What does the devil say? Eat the fruit. Uh, God says, husbands, love your wives. What does the devil say? Don't love her. Uh, get rid of her. What, uh, God says, children, obey your parents. What does the devil say? You don't have to do nothing they say. As a matter of fact, you know when somebody starts acting opposite from what they're supposed to act, yet that gives it away right there who's in control of their life, right? And boy, that explains a lot, don't it? When, when, when kids act up, uh, when they say, I don't care what you say, I'm, it's my life, I'm going to do what I want to, nobody can tell me what to do, they're, they're talking backwards. That's exactly backwards from the way God ordained this thing to go. The, the, the Lord said, go to church. What does the devil say? You don't need to go to church. It don't matter. You can do just as good living right here, stay at home. You can read your Bible a little bit. It's not important. You know, he takes you opposite from what God said. The Lord said, pray. The devil says, waste of time. Uh, the, the world says, all the problems in the world are blamed on God and religion. All the wars started by religion. You see how backwards the world has got this morning? It's really, 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 really bad. I'm telling you, it's, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. I'll give you an illustration. Uh, the Bible said one time, there's uh, this man over here, and he's demon-possessed. And this guy was demon-possessed so bad that the Lord that come and talked to him that day. And the Lord came up and he said, now, now I'm going to get you guys out of there. And they said, don't do it, Jesus. Don't do it. Don't, don't, make, us, don't make us get out of him. We like living in him. Uh, he, he's, he likes rap music. He likes HBO. He likes, uh, he's wicked. He smokes pot. Don't make us leave here. And the Lord said, sorry, you got to go. Bam! And when he got out, those demons come out of that guy and the Bible said there was a great big herd of swine, pigs, feeding on the hillside. And those demons went in them pigs, 2,000 of them. So you got 2,000 pigs that got demons in them. Man, there's a lot you can learn from that. That's the first case in the Bible of deviled ham. Also, you can learn, you learn this. You learn, according to the Bible, that a, a demon's first choice is a person, right? And then if they can't live in a person, they get an animal. Remember the old mad dogs? You used to hear about mad dogs. People come in and say, Lord, there's a mad dog. Get the young'uns in the house. When I was little, they'd come foaming at the mouth, biting people. You don't ever hear about a mad dog no more. It's funny that them demons, they, get a, they get out of people, and, in a, and the Bible said those hogs ran. Pigs don't like to run. Sort of opposite from what a pig likes to do. And he said they ran down a steep place and jumped off in the lake and committed hogicide. Right there in front of everybody. And the Bible said there, now you know what a farmer told me one time? He said, you can't make a pig run downhill. Pigs don't run down hills. They're top heavy. Their nose will bump on a root or something. Pigs always turn and run up a hill. But what do they do when the devil gets in them? Run opposite from what they're so, supposed to do. It's the same thing. What makes, what makes a, a, a family break up? It ain't God. It's the devil. What causes a kid to rebel and go out and ruin their life? It's not God. It's the devil. The world is backward. The protesters out protesting are praised and the police are degraded. I, everything's turned around. Have you noticed on TV and the news now, the criminal gets every benefit of a doubt. The, the cops uh, get crucified. 
by the media, and it's not supposed to be that way. It's backward. If you're a boy, the Lord, uh, the Lord made you a boy, and the devil says, you need to be a girl. If you're a girl, the devil says, be a, be a boy. He makes everything go backwards. I, you want to get, get down plain with it? Okay, let's do that right now. Uh, Colin Kaepernick, or whatever his name is, uh, the little baby whiny football player that won't stand for the national anthem, was named Citizen of the Year by GQ magazine. You know what that is? Backwards. He ought to be called Treason Man of the Year of betraying our country. Now, let me just get off on right here this morning. If you didn't come to hear preaching this morning, you're in the wrong place. I'm going to tell you what's this morning. Listen, if you want to protest police, go down to the police department and protest the police. If you want to protest uh, uh, racial inequality, go to some building where they deal with it and talk, uh, do whatever you want to do. But when you protest our flag and our national anthem, you are a traitor to the country, people. There's a lot I don't like about America, but it's my country. God let me live in it, and I'm going to salute that flag. I don't care who the president is. I'm going to stand and salute and honor our country. You know what that is? That's straight. You know what the devil says? Do it backwards. Amen? Amen. I bet of them boys that bled and died so that they could have the freedom to make $10 million a year would be offended if they realized they wouldn't respect that. That's backwards. That's backwards, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Caitlin, Bruce, whatever its name is, I, I'm telling you that thing, turn, turn this thing around back. That's not backwards. You don't celebrate that. You don't make, that's not something great. That's something opposite from what God uh, created when he made this world. Amen? Amen? Uh, I mean, uh, a gay wedding? Are you kidding? I'm not, I don't hate nobody. God loves everybody. But what do you do at a homosexual wedding? What does a preacher say? You, whatever you are, make this whatever it is, to be whatever you're... Would one of you please kiss the bride? Some of y'all getting awful nervous now this morning. That means you're, you're hanging out wrong. I don't hate nobody. I don't hate nobody. I, I, listen, I don't have no hatred in my heart. I'm no better than a homosexual. I deserve to go to the same hell everybody else does. Don't you sit there and say I'm judging and I'm being, I'm being judgmental and all that. I'm trying to get you to think straight. There was a time in this country when people thought straight. Now things are going backwards. This world is on a backward course. I get, you want an illustration? Let me, let me give you one. You know what they're saying now? If, if, you can, if you go to school and you say, I'm a girl, even though you're not, if you believe you are and feel like you are, you're allowed to go in the girls' locker room. You're allowed to go in the girls', on girls trips. It's, it's that way all over this country. And you're, some of y'all sitting there saying, well, if you think... Now, now, here's the truth. It don't matter what you think. Now, you know what I am now? I'm going to get society by what I just said. There was a time in this country when people used what we call common sense. Those days are over. This thing's going backward. Look, now it's transracial. There is a, there is a white man with pink hair who now identifies as a Filipino woman, really, riding around in Florida, and they're on the news talking about it, and these people, just like they got good sense, are looking right into the camera and saying, well, if he really believes he's a Filipino woman, he is a Filipino woman, and should be treated as a Filipino woman. You know where that's headed, don't you? It don't matter what you think you are, it don't matter what you are, it, but people have to treat you what you believe you are. There's a, a black boy, teenage boy, born African-American, who now says that he is a 35-year-old white man from Colorado named Harrison. And he really believes and feels that he is a 35-year-old white man from Colorado. And he tries his best. There's videos of him. It's on YouTube. He dresses, tries to dress like a 35-year-old white man from Colorado. 
Colorado dress like. I don't know what that is. Uh, but he tries to dress like that, and he's got long hair, and, he's, and they interviewed his mama, and his mama said, well, I think it's crazy. She said, I can say I'm Rihanna all I want to, but I ain't. I said, amen. Thank God somebody in that family got some sins. You see what I'm saying? It's dark. It's gone backwards, brother. It's gone backwards. Hey, what's, what's, you know where that's headed? What's to stop a 14-year-old from saying, I believe I'm 16. I want my driver's license. I believe I have a degree from Harvard. You have to hire me or you're discriminating. That's where we're headed. We are living in a society where things are going backwards and it's considered normal. And if you say anything about it, you're the bad guy. I'll get criticized for what I'm saying this morning. A hundred years ago, we wouldn't have believed that. You know what we'd say? You know what they'd have said to them a hundred years ago? You are what you are. You know what they say now? They say, you ain't what you are, you're what you think you are. And if you think you're a lion or a tiger, you are. And if you think you're an exotic dancer from Las Vegas, you are. We say, it don't matter what you think, you are what you are. If you shout and scream in a ball game, you're considered normal. But if you stood up right now and said, Woo, hallelujah, it's good to be saved. People say, Ooh, that person's full of weird. We're going to walk on gold streets, people. Gold streets. We're going to live forever in a perfect environment with a perfect government, with a perfect Savior, have every need fulfilled, and we're not going to burn in hell. Now, you tell me that ain't better than somebody knocking a home run. See how messed up people think it is? One guy looked at me one time and she said, why do you have to scream and yell? Why do they scream and yell at the ball game? They got something to be happy about. They got something to be happy They're cheering on their team. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, some of you sitting right here this morning, you are so politically correct, you can't even process what I'm saying because your mind been twisted. By the, I'll give you one. If you spank your kids like the Bible teaches, everybody did for thousands of years, you can be turned in for child abuse and DSS come get you. We got kids. Me and my wife got three of them right now. Been here. Uh, two's in foster care. And uh, this little darling sitting right here. Look at him taking notes with his tie on. And you know what? They want to come to our house. Nothing, no, I'm not saying this is wrong. They want to come to our house and say, you need a fire extinguisher. You need this. You need that. All your windows have to lock. Oh, nothing, that's fine. I ain't got a problem with that. Uh, they say, you can't, you can't do this. You can't do that. You know what they ought to do? The first thing DSS ought to do is come and say, do you have HBO in this home? You're not allowed to have children in this home if you've got HBO and show slime and sin to the max. Yeah, you heard me. Yeah, every one of y'all heard me. Right. You ought not to have a child in your home if you're that filthy. I can't hear you. You say, well, ain't nobody going to like you. I ain't running no popularity contest. God puts this on. This, you know good and well that stuff's of the devil. You know it is. Y'all, Some of y'all look at me like you ain't heard no preaching like this in 20 years. You've been going to them weird churches. That's your problem. Them, th- them quiet churches are a cult. You better stay out of them. You know what they ought to say? They ought to say if your child has unmonitored unsupervised access to the internet, you're not allowed to keep a foster child. That's what they ought to say. That's what they ought to say. Buddy, that internet done more than a lack of a fire extinguisher has ever done to a child. I'm telling you, it's backwards. This thing going backwards. Number three, it's a deceitful course. It's a deceitful course. You see, the course of this world is deceitful. You're going down through here. The devil's up here driving, and you're riding back there. There's movie stars. There's athletes. Just about everybody's on there. And me and you are standing saying, jump off! Jump off! And they're laughing and say, you weirdos. What's wrong with you people? Man, we're partying. We're living it up. I'm not giving this up. We're drinking. We're dancing. We're headed down. It's a deceitful course. There's many signs along the way. You see a big old billboard. And there's a guy who's got his arm around a pretty girl. And he's got a Corvette. And he's sitting on it and drinking a Bud Dumber. 
and boy, he holds that thing up there, and you think, you know, and the, and the devil says, all you got to do is drink butt dumber, and you'll get a pretty girl in a Corvette. Now, the truth is, that ain't true. That ain't true. Butt dumber will not get you a pretty girl in a Corvette. It'll get you, uh, it'll get you a red neck and rotten teeth and, and, and a place down at the shelter somewhere. That's what it'll get you. The Bible said, whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. That's talking about alcohol. Alcohol ain't your friend. It's your enemy. It's a devil in liquid form. I don't know how long it's been since you heard a preacher preach against alcohol, but it's still bad. It's still wrong. You trace it all the way through that Bible uh, from one end to the other, brother, and it's bad news. It ain't going to make you a better person. I'm telling you, it's a deceitful course. You see, the devil puts the, the bait on the hook. When a man goes fishing, he puts his hook down there, got this worm on there, that's deceitful, isn't it? And them fish, them dumb fish, they come swimming around. They're like, mm, look at there. I'm going to get it. No, I'm going to get in front of you. And they go their mouth open like that. Guess what? They don't see the hook. All they see is the bait. Once they take the bait, the hook's got them. And they're out the frying pan, buddy, before they know it. Now, that's the way the devil does. He shows you the bait, but not the hook. He sh look at the movie stars. Look at the people in this world. Facts of history back up what I'm saying to you this morning. I know it's not pleasant. I know it's not hip and popular. But the facts back up what I'm saying this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil will only show you the bait but not the hood. You're like this guy. These guys went out and they, they go out and steal gas and sell it. And they's out uh, one night not long ago. And they'd they go to these RV parks. And they go to these RV parks. Well, these things got, you know, 20, 30 gallons, 50 gallons of gas. And you put a siphon hose in here. How many of y'all ever used a siphon hose when you were growing up? You know what I'm talking about. You stick it in the gas tank, and you have to get lower than that, suck on it a little bit, and then you have to spit it out. I've seen my daddy spit gas out uh, many times. He'd get, be getting out of the truck to go in the lawnmower or something like that. And it gets in there and goes, like that right there. And then, and then it starts running by itself, and you feel that can up and, and use for the lawnmower, the tiller, or whatever, whatever you need it in. And they was down there, and they was all sneaking. One of them went down that way, and one of them went down that way. And one of the buddies, he never did come back, never did come back, never did come back. They said, man, man, we better go check on him. They went down there, and he was laying like this in grass. About 10 o'clock at night, oh, he was throwing his guts out. He was so sick, he couldn't. They said, man, what is wrong with you? And what he'd done, he's sneaking around out there, going to siphon that gas out. And he put that hose in the wrong hole on that camper. <laughs> got in the sewer. And he'd sucked that stuff out and got it in his throat. And he was about to die. Now, that's you when you smoke pot. That's you when you take, shoot, snort, take. That's your Oxycontin. That's your crystal meth. That's cocaine. That's crap. The devil don't show you the hook. Just the bait. Are you listening? The devil don't show you that. The devil will show you that pretty girl at work. That's just the bait, man. That's just the bait. And then you break your wife's heart and you lose your kids' respect and ruin your marriage and ruin her and lose everything you've got. That's the hook. The devil will just show you that handsome man at work, ladies. That's the worm on the hook. You don't see the hook. The hook's in there. It's a deceitful course. It's a deceitful course. Most people have been deceived by the devil and uh, drugs, adultery, any sin you can think of. It's all like, let me give you a few quotes right quick and I'm going to move on. I'm going to quote some famous people that you know. Most of you know. And I'm going to let you, because most people, most people believe, a high few people in here believe, if I had enough money and enough fame, I would be completely happy. I hear kids say it. Man, if I had, if I had like what Justin Bieber had, and I had millions of dollars in the bank, I could buy me this, and I, I'd be happy. Most people think if you had plenty of money and a big giant house and any kind of car you want, that automatically guarantees you happiness if you could just be famous and rich and beautiful and good looking and smart and have everything you want. Let me quote, let me give you some quotes. Lady Gaga, she said this, why am I unhappy? 
I'm not happy. We had girls up here singing this choir a while ago, happier than her. She said, why do I want to quit? Disappointment? Success? Nothing. Nothing has made me happy. Russell Brand, that old wicked guy from over in Britain, he said, it ain't blank worth it. He said, I've had all the cars, I've had the money, I've had the women, I've had the parties. And he said, quote, I still feel empty inside. Let me tell you something, people. It may seem old-fashioned, but there is still to this day down on the inside of every man, woman, boy, and girl on this earth a longing and a heart for fellowship with God that you cannot have any other way except through the Lord Jesus Christ. Eric Clapton, he's an old, fat, old-time guitar back in our day. Dude could play guitar. Let me tell you what. You know what he said? He said, I have cars. I have women. I have a house. I have millions of dollars. On a daily basis, I want to commit suicide. Better listen. John Lennon, before he was killed at such a young age, he said, the Beatles, we made it. And then when we made it to the top, there wasn't nothing else to do. And he said, no joy. What is there now? See, when you get to the top, you look around and say, this ain't even what I thought it was. I'm still the old empty, lonely person I've always been. Alexi Panna, she's a, she's a movie star. She's a model. She's in real estate, millions of dollars. And she said, okay, I got everything I ever wanted. And I still don't feel indifferent. It's a deceitful course. The biggest trick the devil ever pulled on this country is making people think that stuff will make you happy and satisfied. Number four. Number four, it's an accelerating course. It's an accelerator. Now, what do I mean by that? That means the further it goes, the faster it gets. Have you ever, have you ever rode down a, a hill on a sled every, every year when it snows? We run down my front yard, man, it's just like this. And we got the pond down there at the bottom, and, and the pond freezes. Down there, but when it snows, we start up there. And, and, and we usually just get a run and go, go like that and just land on our belly and hit that sled down that hill. And the further you go, the faster that thing gets. And then you see that, you see you're getting closer and closer to that water and I just dig my toes into the, in the and that she breaks. You stop yourself because I've seen them go out, out actually on that water. And you don't want to go in that water when it's that cold. Uh, let me tell you, uh, you'll, you'll freeze to death in a second. But you know what? If you start out slow, you push something off a hill, it starts out slow. Father, it gets down the fire. Let me tell you something. This whole world going 90 miles an hour, folks. It's running out from under you. It's getting worse and worse and worse. You say, I'm a prophet of gloom. Say whatever you want to. The world is getting worse by the minute. 4,400 babies a day, a day, are murdered in this country by means of abortion. Legal, legal killing of those little babies. Scott Peterson's in prison right now for killing Lacey and her unborn child, double homicide. And the state of California charged him with a double homicide. How's that? How's that? The baby one, you say, well, it wasn't her choice. What difference does it make whose choice it is? If it's killing, it's killing. And ladies and gentlemen, the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl weekend this past year, they arrested 522 child sex traffickers at the Super Bowl. Hollywood has turned into a cesspool more than ever before. They talk about Judge Roy Moore, and I don't even know the guy. I don't know much about him, and, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not for him or against him. I'm not taking up for him if he did wrong. If he did wrong, he ought to pay. But they're, they're giving him down the road. He, he messed with a girl when he was young or something. I don't know if he did or he didn't. If he did, he ought to pay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? And they talk about him and Donald Trump flirting with some girls when he was young and Bill Clinton did this and that. And if they're guilty, they're guilty and they ought to pay. What about the rappers that got babies all over this country? What about the Beatles who kept 14-year-old girls in their motel room all night when they was on tour? How come you never hear? I'll tell you why, buddy. Because the devil covers it up for them and blasts anybody else trying to do something good. And I'm not taking up for any of these men. Trying to get you to think straight. 
7,000 kids have been rescued in the last few years for traffickers. I hate to even bring it up. There's an abuse reported every 10 seconds. There's five kids a day die in this country because of abuse. One in three young girls are sexually abused. One in three and one in five boys. That means there's 20 here today. Eighty-five percent of the folks, the people in prison were abused growing up. And you tell me the world's getting better? You, tell, you got more locks on your door or less than you had 20 years ago? You used to even have to lock your doors. Leave the keys in the car. And people say the world's getting better. Let me tell you something. People never thought, it never entered people's mind that somebody would come in the church with a gun and start just killing everybody. That never even entered. You know, you didn't even think about stuff like that. And now everywhere I go, they say, got your security team, got your security. Insurance companies are requiring churches to make security. You tell me the world's getting better? It's accelerating. The Bible said evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse and worse. Buddy, we're living in that time, folks. We're living in that time when the world has got worse and worse and worse. One more and I'm through. It's a destructive course. Broad is the way that what? Leadeth where? To destruction. Now, if you went out there today and you said, Hey, Danny, hop in. You going to ride with me? The first thing I'm going to ask is, Where are you going? Listen, if you'll hop in the car with anybody and ride with them, you're crazy. First thing I want to know is, are you, are you, They might be going to Charlotte. I don't want to go to Charlotte. I want to get something to eat and go to Hoppy Tom Holler. I don't want to go. I don't want to go to Boone this evening. I want to go. I want to go. Hey, listen, when you ride with the devil, you better look and see where he's going. The Bible said it leads to destruction. You better look at where it's going. God's going to burn it up one day. God's going to burn it up. The broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in there at studied about, uh, talking about going backwards. Anton LaVey, he was the pastor of the First Church of Satan in San Francisco, California. On, on California Street in a hotel. Hotel California. That's what that song's about, you know. Them words of that song say, such a lovely place, such a lovely face. It's got Anton LaVey's face there pastor of the first church of Satan. He said, I went. This could be heaven or it could be hell. You can check in, but you can't ever, ever leave. That's the word, the Hotel California. And in 1966, he founded that church. Folks, Anton LaVey had contact with some of the biggest name movie stars in the world. One was which? Jane Mansfield. Jane Mansfield was the Hollywood queen of America after Marilyn Monroe died. Marilyn Monroe died in 1962. Jane Mansfield picked up where she got and carried it on further. She sang in nightclubs. She did the first supposedly semi new show uh, movie in 1963. And Jane Mansfield wanted to carry on what Marilyn Monroe left. And she was wicked. And she married Mr. Universe and several other fellers. And her life was wicked. And Jane Mansfield had contact with Anton LaVey. And one of the things in the church of Satan is you have to be able to learn, read, speak, write, talk, and do things backwards. Isn't that interesting? They say that one of the things they train Satanists is to be able to talk and write and do stuff backwards. Isn't that interesting? backwards. Now, back masking on them rock and roll records, when they grow them back, that stuff's real. I can prove it. I got it on, I got it on tape. And Jane Mansfield had a friend. And this friend was a Christian and she used to beg her to get saved. And she'd write a letter and say, Miss Mansfield, 
I want you to be saved. I want to go to heaven. I want you to be in heaven with me. I'm praying for you and prayed for you. And she finally got a letter from her. Jane Mansfield was about 30, 32 years old at that time. And she wrote that woman a letter and said, I just thought you'd be glad to know I've joined the church. She said, I've joined the church of Satan. And I've given my mind, my body, and my soul to the devil. And she had contact with that old lady. Well, about a year or two later, her, her boyfriend, her lawyer, and boyfriend was sitting in the middle. She's on the passenger side. And her 20-year-old driver was coming to take them down there to New Orleans for a gig they had down there. And they was going to, she's trying to make money to have them pay legal bills and stuff because her career sort of went south. And down there on that foggy night, June 29th, 1967, in a 1966 bright blue Buick, brighter than my jacket. And it's coming down through there real late that night, 80 miles an hour. And there was a fog there where they, some, some uh, workers were spraying the crops and it created a, just a mist. You couldn't see. Just all of a sudden, you just go, you couldn't see nothing. And a tractor and trailer truck slowed down. You couldn't see them running. It had stopped. And they come flying down that road 80 miles an hour and never even seen that truck and run into that fog and run right up under that truck. And it cut the top of that, that car up. They've, I think some guy in North Carolina's got it. Or they moved it to St. Augustine or somewhere. And that car just ripped. It was like you took a can opener and tore the top off that thing. And all three of them in the front seat died just like that. 34, top of the world, a goddess that everybody worshipped. Reports, some reports say that she was decapitated completely. Others deny that source and say it just crushed her head and skull. They never even knew what hit them. I was reading in a book. This story goes. I can't confirm or deny this part. They said the night that happened, out in San Francisco, Anton LaVey, the pastor of the Church of Satan, was sitting cutting out some articles in a paper. And he cut out an article in a paper about that time where he knew the wreck happened. And they looked on the other side was a picture of Jane Mansfield. And them scissors went right across that neck. Took her head right off. On the other side of the country, the devil come to collect what's his. And I'm going to tell you people here something this morning. The devil ain't playing games, y'all. This ain't no game we're in. This is reality. If that woman could come back to today, She'd give everything in her power, every dime she ever made, to sit where you're sitting right now and hear what you're hearing and get down here and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. But the course of this world is something destructive. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Nobody's moving, nobody's talking. Keep your seat right where you stand. Everybody's praying. If you're here this morning and you're not right with God, please, no moving. Please pray. Let me ask you a question. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, does God speak in your heart? He said, Brother Danny, I need to get right with God. I need to get right with God. I'm going to ask you. We're not going to sing. We're just going to get out of our seat and come up here and pray. If you got somebody you need to pray for, I'm inviting you to come. If you're here this morning and you're not right with the Lord, I'm inviting you to come. Come on, right now. Come. Come on. Slip out of your seat and come. That's right. That's right. Others, others, come on right now. Come on right now. Just get out of your seat. Come right now. Come on. Come on, mamas, daddies, boys, girls. 
Young people, some's coming over here. Might need somebody to pray on these folks over here. God's speaking to your heart, young man. If you're here and you've never been saved by God's grace, why don't you make things right this morning? Come on, just slide right out of your seat. You say, what do I have to do to be saved, preacher? The Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You realize that he paid the sin debt. He paid the price for your sin. He paid the price for your sin. Dying on the cross there at Mount Calvary. And you trust him and him only to save you right now. Come on, come on right now. Others, others, others right now. Come on right now. Let God speak your heart. Let God speak your heart. Father, I pray right now. Oh God, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one that's holding back this morning. Lord, it's it come to you while there's still change, while there's still opportunity, and Lord, to come to you and repent before it's too late. God, I pray that you bless every single family here today. Dear God, do what needs to be done. Lord, we know it's no accident. You put this message on my heart for a reason, and I pray that whoever needed this the most, God, that it would find a lodging place in their heart right now. Whatever and however you do, we'll thank you and praise you for it. Now, our heads are still bowed. People are still praying. Will you let God speak to you today? Friend, don't wait. Don't wait. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. He said, I'll just take my chances. Yeah, like she did. Like Jimi Hendrix did. Like Amy Winehouse did. Like John Lennon did. Like Elvis did. Like Michael Jackson did. You'll lose. You'll lose. You'll lose. The devil don't play fair. Father, I pray right now that you touch every single person in this room and help them to realize their condition before you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. 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 Some still praying over here. Amen.